So you have family members with Tourette's? Dad's side of the family is full of them. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Runs in the family. Runs in the family, and I was, I was the lucky one that got full-fledged Tourette's syndrome. Yeah. Like, my dad has a tick disorder. Um, my sister doesn't have anything, and my brother doesn't have anything either. I just, I lucked out, hmm. I guess. Part of me just wants to, like, give you a big old hug because, like, I want to I wanna help fix that for you. Right, and, like, at, at this point in my life, I just... I choose to remain medication free just because A, I'm just bad at remembering to take medication and, and B, like it, it really doesn't interfere with my, my personal or uh, professional life. I mean, other than kind of having to deal with some of this pain uh, right now because of my tics, like, I'm used to it. Like it's just, it's just part of me. So I just like, uh, I just let it do its thing. I have a laughing tick. Uh, that just, it comes and goes. That one, like, it'll come for like a week or two and then it'll be gone for a couple months. Interesting. <laughs> Not the best at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I couldn't believe so, that. <laughs> that's the only one that I will like actively suppress because nobody wants a cop laughing at a death scene. <laughs> like, that's not, not appropriate. So, we get that. so yeah. you can suppress them? The laughing one? It's miserable, but mm. I can for the most part. And, um, like a lot of my tics when I'm, I mean, and you know as well, I mean, you both know, I mean, when you're, you know, very focused on something, you don't tick. And that's kind of what my job does. I mean, I'm so focused on, on what's happening in front of me, I don't tick. But a lot of times if it's just like a simple medical or a lift assist, you know, I, I'm not focused on anything. Cause so, so wait, on the job, you don't do any of this? <clears throat> um, I'll have my, my sniffing tick and my huffing tick and some of my hard blinking, but most of my like um, motor ticks in my arms and everything, non-existent pretty okay. much. So everything we're seeing right now, in this moment, everything we're seeing, you normally have that? Yeah. But when you're off the job as a police officer, what else, what other ticks? Um, well, I do have some, some verbal ticks. I do have like slight coprolalia. Uh, which is like the swearing and obscene words. Profanity. Yeah. Okay. Um, but those, uh, luckily, luckily, I can suppress those. Okay. Um, I don't feel the need to, like, they, they, don't, they don't come up until, uh, generally it's usually when I'm driving. Like by myself, either in the squad car or even on the way up here, um, they, just, they just come out when I'm driving. And hmm. like when I'm at work, I got to make sure like my window's rolled up because hmm. I don't want to be driving down the street at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon and just like yell out some vulgarity and people see it's a squad car driving by. And it's like, hurry, you know. <laughs> so tick-tock through all of your ticks for me. I got toe ticks. I got leg stretching tick. Um, uh, hand stretching, wrists. Arm stretch, <laughs> I got the huff, the sniff, the laughing tick, a little bit of coprolalia, a little bit of echolalia, um, hard blinking, <clears throat> throat clearing, uh, face grimace. That's about all I can think of right now. Mm. <laughs> and then new ones come and go. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I haven't had a new one <clears throat> in a while. Shoulder shrugging. Mm. <laughs> I think I have a pretty mild case. Same. You think you do. And I think I have a mild case. You do? Because there do? are people that are way worse than me. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are people that, <laughs> like, legitly need medication just to, you know, just to function in their mm. daily lives. So, like, I feel blessed in the way where, like, I, I don't need medications. Like, yeah, some days are, are, are worse than others. But, <clears throat> I mean, for the most part, like, my body is used to these movements. Some people watching this may think, but I think you do need medication. <clears throat> What would you say to them? To each their own, I guess. You know, like, again, like, I, I've just gotten used to this. This is, this is part of my life. And they're a little up now because I'm in a room full of strangers talking about Tourette's syndrome. And yeah. generally, you know, when you talk about it, they kind of happen a little bit more. Is it exhausting, all these ticks? Like, do they tire you out? Um, on the extra ticky days, um, I'm generally a little bit more tired by the end of the day. Yeah. Like like tonight, I'll probably be a little bit more a little bit more tired just because I am ticking more than I normally do. Like, like after a while, they'll start calming down a little bit, but this is just kind of my my normal. Do you tick in your sleep? No, nobody has said anything. 
I tick a lot before I sleep. I will sometimes wake up and tick and then fall back asleep. That's fascinating to me, how this can happen during the day, but like you go to sleep and it's just like. Isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> right? It really is. Like, yeah. what is it about our bodies that just off and on? Yeah, it's like, okay, and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's weird. But does meditation help either one of you? <clears throat> Never tried it. Okay. <laughs> I know we had talked about that uh, I would uh, a couple it. couple months ago. It's been amazing for me. Yes. You? Yes, it does help. Okay. A lot. Okay. Focusing helps. I align so much with that. What did you say? He, when he said, when I focus on something, I don't tick as much. Uh -huh. I don't know if you feel the same way, but that helps me a lot. So meditation, yes. Oh, oh for me, focus is definitely a uh, tick deterrent. But high stress for me is a tick accelerator. See, and for me, I feel like there's two different types of stress. There's the on-scene, immediate stress of a situation. I excel at that. Ticks go away because I'm most likely focused. Uh, having ADHD, you know, I can focus on many things at once, and I can make snap judgments and decisions uh, in uh, a timely manner. And then you have the daily stressors of your everyday life. Those, like, when I, I know when my stress level is getting higher because I'm ticking more often than I normally am. Yeah. And then and that's when I need to, like, okay, you know, like, what are the stressors in my life that I need to work on? <laughs> or which ones can I actually work on uh, just to lower my stress levels and just make me tick less? Mm. I have a question for Craig. Please can go, I? please. So I used to be a medic, which I know is, you know, different. You're an officer, I was a medic, but I love same medics, realm. Yep. Yeah, right. So you get it, you get it. Yep. And so. <clears throat> I was like one of the youngest medics in the state, so I was already at a disadvantage, or at least so I thought, right? Right. And then I didn't know what was going on with blinking. I just got diagnosed recently. Okay. And so I worked nights, so I was already tired, and then go to like a stressful scene, and I was always, I would like blink, and I would get worried, or rather I would think about what people thought about me if oh, they didn't sure. take me seriously. The calls that you were going to, do you feel or, or get concerned about that too or not? So? Um, when my tics first came back, so, that, so I've had Tourette's syndrome ever since I was a child. I was never diagnosed because it ran in the family. As soon as you know, I started showing signs and symptoms, and parents were like, Tourette's syndrome. You know, it didn't interfere with my life. It didn't interfere with my schooling. So they saw no reason for, for me to get diagnosed. Well, fast forward to me turning 18 or 19, I made a really wise choice and uh, chose to smoke cigarettes. Well, that slowly, like over time, uh, suppressed my tics to the point where like you could barely tell I was ticking. Like you would really have to pay attention to me to tell that I would tick. Interesting. Well, after you know so many years of that, I'm just like I'm gonna get healthy. This is expensive, so I used Nicorette gum to uh, curb my cravings. <coughs> I was down to uh, one piece a day, and I was thinking, I was like, okay, am I, am I chewing this gum because it's helping, or am I chewing it just for the sake of chewing gum? So I quit. And three days after that last piece, it was like the floodgates opened uh, for my motor tics. Like, my arms were going crazy. Like, I thought it was the shirt I was wearing. <laughs> you know, like, like Tourette, I mean, like, I hadn't thought about Tourette syndrome in years. You know, so for all of a sudden, for my tics to go that crazy, I was like, it's just, new shirt or, you know, like it's, just, it's gotta be something. Well, they didn't stop. Like I was icing my joints by the end of the day and about two weeks after that, uh, then I started getting vocal tics. And the first one that came about was like a really loud cough. Like luckily this was pre-COVID. Um, but <laughs> yeah, even, even my huffing tick during COVID was interesting enough. But uh, uh, then at, at that point I'm just like, okay, like something's up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to uh, the neurologist, figure out what's going on. <laughs> you know, just like how Tourette syndrome affects everybody differently, nicotine affects everybody differently. And for me, nicotine suppressed my tics for all those years. Wow. <laughs> and then all of a sudden when I stopped, it's like, okay, and we're back. Wow. And now they just won't leave. <laughs> wow. But back to your question. <laughs> um, so, uh, when the, my tics first came back, that's the, that was a big concern of mine. First of all, like I had been, you know, working with a number of these deputies and officers for years. What are they going to think? Yeah. And yeah, what are people on scene going to think? I'm making noises and moving around. So like I tried so hard 
in the beginning just to try to suppress them. And like, I just, I couldn't do it. Like it, it hurt. It was taking my mind off of what was in front of me. And after like a month or two of like hiding myself away, only responding to calls, I'm just like, I can't change this. Like this, this is, this is me, you know? So I, you know, finally went to coffee with the deputies and other officers and I'm like, surprise. And I mean, nothing but like, like, like honest questions. I mean, they were, it was nothing but support. And I was really happy for that. And, uh, you know, through all that, it just got to be, uh, just, just having the confidence in your abilities. Um, you know, like my ticks are not in the forefront of anything I do in my life. It's just a part of me just like breathing and blinking. So when I go on scene, I'm going on scene to handle the situation at hand. The ticks are just there. So people will either notice them or they won't. Do you feel like you can stop yours? Like if you tried right now to stop what you're doing, could you? I really have to focus. Um, the, the biggest part is uh, the breathing because my sniffing tick is so incorporated with how I breathe. Like that one, that one hurts the most. <laughs> all right, that's about all I want. <laughs> okay, but here's what's interesting about that. Here's what's interesting. You just said the breathing is key and central to you controlling it. That's meditation. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I no need to joke. Look into you focus a little bit more. on the breathing. It is as easy as one, two, three. There's hope for you, my friend. Oh man, I am at the try. And I know you're looking for it. You've tried. Tell Kelsey what you've tried because the ticks were causing you pain, right? Yep. Muscle pain. Yep. And and I mean, still are. Um, so I have done uh, one session of Botox injections. Uh, before they were just putting me on. Um, Opiates don't work. Uh, muscle relaxers don't work. I've done uh, trigger point injections, lidocaine injections, like like whatever they could put into my neck for the pain they did. None of it ever worked. So I did one uh, trial of Botox, Botox injections, but they said it could take up to three sessions, yeah. nine months. So I'm just like, okay, well, what do I do in the meantime? And they're yeah. like, here's some muscle relaxers. I'm just like, they don't work, and you know that. <laughs> so now I've tried acupuncture. <laughs> And the first, I've gone four times now. <clears throat> and the first two times, I really felt like it, it, it helped. I was you know, only in pain maybe one or two times during that whole week. Mm -hmm. Well, then, uh, just due to you know, my scheduling, I had to skip a week and then go the week after. And it was like three hours after the acupuncture appointment, pain back. Mm. And then it was just like I had not gone to the gone to the acupuncturist. Well, Kelsey <coughs> just went and got diagnosed like three weeks ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Just recently. You tried to go to the Mayo Clinic. <coughs> what happened? They denied me. Really? They get so many uh, people wanting them because they're, they're world renowned. Mm -hmm. So you literally have to fill out an application <laughs> to be seen by the Clinic of Neurology. And then they review that and make <laughs> the determination if you are in need of their services over other people. How did that make you feel? Like, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I, I, I can understand that, you know, a lot of people want to go to the Mayo, um, and there are probably a lot of people that are, are, are more in need than, than me. Like, I can still function uh, in pain, but I can still function. So I just try again later. You know, that's just kind of the biggest thing, is just yeah. can't, let, can't, get, can't be down for too long. <laughs> Yeah. You have a great attitude. I oh, agree. Wow. I agree. Well, I have to say personally, I'm very <coughs> proud of the two of you. Oh, thank you. I sound like some grandpa saying that. But I really am proud of the both of you for simply being authentically you. And you as well. Thank you. It's Seriously. Been a, it's been a long, winding journey to get there. <laughs> oh, I bet. It always is. It always <laughs> is. It always is. How do you feel? I don't know why I'm more nervous now than I was when we did the, the group interview. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to <laughs> calm my ticks down. It never works. <laughs> Everybody good? It looks tiring. I'm not gonna say like this though. <laughs> um, it, looks, it, looks, it looks tiring. It's because you get used to it. Really? Yeah, like <laughs> online that's like one of the top 
three questions I get asked the most is like, you just look like you would be tired all the time. And it's just like, <coughs> like when your body's used to things, it's, it's used to it. You know, like the extra ticky days. Um, yeah, I'm a little more tired, but I mean, <coughs> having ADD and Tourette's syndrome, I mean, I'm constantly on the move. So like I eat like a horse, my metabolism is always high. So I guess there's some pros and cons to, to having it, but <coughs> most times I don't, I don't feel extra tired. How much do you, how much do you sleep at night? Like right now? Yeah. I slept an hour yesterday. Because mm. I started the movie up and I watched the first 10 minutes and then I woke up uh, with about 15 minutes left and that was about all I slept. Do you think the Tourette's is to blame for it? Um, I think Tourette's is, is well, I wouldn't say Tourette's itself. Um, with Tourette's, you know, there's a lot of co-occurring conditions, sleep issues being one of them. So I've always had trouble sleeping, and I think, you know, being a, a you know, an overnight police officer, sleep during the day, you know, and then having Tourette's syndrome and ADHD and anxiety, it kind of, like, my mind never shuts off. Mm. So trying to trying to just relax enough to fall asleep is, is, is always a struggle. But you seem to be at a point where you're like, I need help. It's, it's gotten to that point now. It's, um, every once in a while I'll have like a good day where I'll sleep like five hours and I'm just like, I feel phenomenal. Mm. When I'm like, <laughs> five hours is still not enough, yeah. but like I can function just fine off of five hours. I should be able to, I should be able to sleep more. Um, Cause I've been using, um, as a pan uh, to help uh, as a sleep aid, but that works 50% of the time. What medications do you take? <coughs> Clonazepam. And what type of medication is that? Uh, that's a benzo. <coughs> it's used as, for me, it's used as a sleep aid. And it, like I said, it, it, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Um, my, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my neurologist ha also had me taking uh, Top of Max, <laughs> but I kind of stopped taking that because I wasn't liking the side effects that it was giving me. Mm -hmm. um, it just it just made me feel slow, like my mind was always foggy. And mm -hmm. in my line of work, I'm, I can't have that. I don't want that. So I just titrated down, and now I just don't take it. Mm -hmm. So how old are you? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. <laughs> It'll be thirty-eight in October. Born and raised in Minnesota. Born and raised. Tell me about life growing up, <coughs> little Craig. Um, I was actually a really shy, quiet kid growing up. I was the middle child, the, the problem child, um, but, and also the only one in my family, or of the siblings that ended up with Tourette's syndrome. But we never made it a, a big deal growing up. You know, I was told I had something called Tourette's syndrome. And diagnosed? Never diagnosed. You've um, never been diagnosed? I was never diagnosed as a child. Okay. Um, because it was so prevalent on, in my dad's side of the family, when I started ticking, <coughs> I, they knew exactly what it was. So they never talked about it. My dad would occasionally tell me, it's like, like when I was ticking a little bit more because I was excited or bored or, you know, whatever. He'd like, think about something else. Because that worked for him. My dad kind of has like, he, my dad has some ticks, probably a tick disorder, but he's never gone and got it uh, diagnosed. <coughs> But, uh, you know, so for him, <laughs> taking his mind off of it helped. I could never do that as a kid. Mm. You know, like it just made me <laughs> like tick more because now I'm thinking about it. Mm. Before, I wasn't thinking about it until he brought it to my attention that I was doing a tick <laughs> and then I would then have to do it more. So not thinking about it <clears throat> makes you tick more. <clears throat> when I'm not thinking about it, I'm just doing it at my regular intervals. Right. <laughs> when it's brought to my attention, uh, then that makes me like cognizant of it or realize that I'm doing it and then make me tick more. It just brings out my ticks uh, more so than uh, normal. Earlier, you tried to control the ticks and were successful. Yeah. What do you start to feel once you're able to control them? What are you feeling in that moment? Um, <clears throat> Like when I stop, yeah, um, anxious. Like my anxiety starts rising. 
<laughs> um, I feel like almost a burning sensation in my chest mm. and it starts like going up to my throat and into my face and then I'm <laughs> trying to control all of my face ticks at the same time so it's just like like my face feels like it's on fire because it wants to hit all those movements at once and I'm wow. just I'm not letting it wow um, <laughs> but the biggest is just like that that pressure in my chest that's not letting me do my vocal ticks does Tourette's in any way inhibit your ability to live a normal life um no I mean I wouldn't go to a movie theater, but that's a personal choice. No, I don't want to be the person making noises while everyone else is trying to enjoy a movie. And you have a job. You do what you love. <clears throat> I love my job. You're a police officer. Yep. Been doing it for more than a decade. Yep, yep. 18 years left, so getting there. <laughs> um, but no, I, I did, it doesn't inhibit uh, anything that I do. I mean, there are times where, you know, like, you know, like everyone, you get a little self-conscious about it, and you're just like, mm, you know, I shouldn't do that just because of, of my tics. But then I'm just like, no, do it. Like, you're not going to know if you're able to, if you can do it or not until you try it. How old were you when you were diagnosed? Low 30s. Okay. It was when, uh, after I quit smoking and my tics came back, oh. that I finally went to a neurologist and, and was, was officially diagnosed then. Hmm. But, yeah. I used to say, yeah, through my whole life, I mean, like growing up, <clears throat> like I said, it was so well known that it was hardly ever talked about. I was a very shy, quiet kid. No, in school, um, I, I was able to suppress my tics. You know, I, I wanted to be seen as normal. You know, like what any, you know, high school age kid wants to be, to be accepted, to appear normal or to be normal. And what happened when you tried to suppress them <clears throat> at that age? I was successful for the most part. Hmm. Um, my tics um, weren't as severe then as they are now. So, like, I would still have some, like, face grimace, the hard blinking. The hard blinking is the one that I could never control. That was just always there. Um, <clears throat> but all of my vocal ones I was able to suppress. So, like, when I got home, then that's when they would all come out. You know, I would just mm. have, like, just, like, a little tick explosion. You don't take, <clears throat> you don't take medication for Tourette's? No. Why not? I just don't see need for it. Um, <clears throat> I am dealing with pain. But if someone with Tourette's, <clears throat> I say this ever so respectfully, yeah. I see a need for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I just, I've never been big on, on, on medications uh, for, for literally anything. And <clears throat> but if the medication could quell and lessen what gives you sometimes pain and all that, <clears throat> is that not worth it? I guess it would be finding the right medication. And with Tourette's syndrome, it's just so hard. Because hmm. it just seems like they just, because there's, there's no one medication for Tourette's syndrome. Sure. It's just medications for other things that just happen to help yeah. with people's tics. So, I mean, I just, I just feel like, like a test subject, you know? It's just like they take a handful of pills and throw them at you, and hopefully one of them sticks. Are you willing I to- I get tired of that. Are you willing to go down the journey of trying? I'm starting to think about doing that. Why? <laughs> because of the pain. Because <laughs> I mean, it's I'm, getting to be too much. It's, it's, I'm coming up on a year now of chronic neck pain. Yeah. You know, and, and so some days are just, I mean, it's completely debilitating. You know, yeah. I mean, I call off work and just <laughs> lay there because nothing, nothing hurt or nothing helps it. Why did you want to do this interview? Because <laughs> I don't think Tourette syndrome gets portrayed the way it should uh, in media. And how should it be portrayed? <laughs> like how people have it, you know. I mean, the the, the media. I mean, copulately is funny. Okay, we get it. But that's what, I mean, that's what people think Tourette syndrome is. That's the part where you curse. <clears throat> yeah, that's what, the part where you curse. I mean, and like I even have people um, approach me. It's like, well, you don't swear. I'm like, that's such a small portion of yeah. what Tourette's syndrome is, but yeah. that's all the media shows. I mean, like TV and movies and, and, and things like that. So the only time you don't <clears throat> tick is when you're sleeping. Yes. Um, or like when I'm, <clears throat> when I'm hyper-focused, like uh, when I'm at work um, going to like a serious call. Um, <clears throat> this will all stop. The only one that I've noticed that sticks around is my sniffing tick. Okay. Otherwise, no motor ticks. Um, it's it's pretty much just like like the vocal ones. Does the Tourette's ever get in the way of your job? It never has. I think uh, at, at certain times it's helped. How so? 
uh, it, 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 I think it helps establish rapport with some people. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gone to calls <laughs> and the individual I'm talking to, very high emotions, very angry. <laughs> and, you know, he very matter-of-factly asks, you know, what's up with you? And, <clears throat> you know, and, and I, I am very just blase about it. It's like, I have Tourette's syndrome, this is my normal. <laughs> like, immediately his demeanor dropped to calm apologized and we had a great conversation that's interesting i never thought about that <clears throat> you know so like you know people people see you know past the badge past the uniform and see me as a person that is dealing with a disability but still able to do the job i love that <laughs> now i have to say this is just me but it kind of bothers me when you say disability it is i mean <laughs> i get it like I do, cause like I don't I, know why I take that. Like that, that's a little bit of a sting for me. It's like I don't want to accept it as a disability. Yeah, and I mean, I I don't personally see it as a disability, but it's labeled as a disability, so I'm just using it just in the well, terms of. Well, it's a it's a neurological a yeah neurological disorder. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so we can be a little disorderly. Exactly, but you can go to jail for that. What? I said, but you can go to jail for that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> True. True.